from the South Point studio. Whoa! <laughs> The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. It's a comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh. 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 Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> 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 Do I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh. Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially a Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. It is Friday. Really, Friday. It is Friday. So we're here, uh, you know, uh, cranking it up for the big weekend, and uh, there is going to be a big weekend, that's for sure. we got a lot of Kentucky Derby points up for grabs and three big Derby prep races. We have uh, a couple of uh, Kentucky Oaks prep races, one of them today. And, of course, it is opening day at Keeneland. The spring meet in Keeneland is opening today, and all I can tell you, folks, is that uh, it doesn't feel like spring here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Right now, here in Las Vegas, the temperature is 43 degrees, and we have a wind chill because the wind is blowing out there as well. We're only going to get up to 55 today, and although the skies look to be pretty clear for the rest of the weekend... Uh, It's going to be a little chilly. We get the warm front coming in afterwards. But it's always fast, firm, and perfect in our race book, so we don't have to worry about that. And, of course, what we're worrying about is the weather outside in three races and three areas that we are really concentrating on. And that, of course, is in Lexington, Kentucky, where the bluegrass will be held tomorrow. And, of course, uh, in New York City at Aqueduct, where the Wood Memorial will be held. And in Southern California at Santa Anita in Arcadia, California, where 
of course, the Santa Anita Derby will be. That's more important, that weather there in those three regions than it is here in Las Vegas because we'll be in the book and it'll always be fast, firm, and perfect here. We welcome all of you listening to us on our anchor radio station, KSHP Sports Talk, 1400 AM and 107.1 FM, in case you're out there early in the morning negotiating traffic in the wind. And, of course, all of you watching us right now at the South Point Studios streaming network at YouTube. We are here at the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino on the Las Vegas Boulevard Strip. And, of course, you can see and hear us now on the uh, streaming. And if you haven't tried it, try it. Do it. Go to YouTube and try it out. And, of course, you can get us on your devices, uh, your iPhones, your Androids, with the either the KSHP app for the radio side and the YouTube app for, of course, the uh, streaming side. And, of course, we have... Uh, the streaming at our websites, racedaylasvegas.com, .vegas.world.global, iPhones or Androids with the apps, as we said, and as well as uh, podcasting. However, wherever, whenever, welcome to the Friday edition of the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. All right, we got a lot uh, setting up for uh, this weekend, that's for sure. And we start out today with uh, Keeneland Racecourse, an always a popular signal for the race players out there and never, never is a dull moment moment at Keeneland. They have great racing there, and they'll have another great racing card today. We'll go into that today, and of course, the Ashland Stakes today that will feature just FYI, and of course, that was the two-year-old filly that won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year and uh, won the Eclipse Award, and uh, she hasn't started as a three-year-old yet. Here we are on April 5th already, and she's making her three-year-old debut today in the Ashland, but there are two very promising uh, Phillies in that race as well. Jonathan Hardoon will talk about that in the Ashland a little bit later. And of course, we're setting it up this weekend for the three big Kentucky Derby prep races as well. And two more Kentucky Oaks prep races tomorrow as well. The Santa Anita Oaks at Santa Anita, of course, and the Gazelle over at Aqueduct. So we're going to have big racing cards at the three epicenters tomorrow of racing, and that is in New York at Aqueduct at Keeneland in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and at Santa Anita in Southern California. All righty. Uh, and, uh, you know, just to, to set it up for you, as far as the weather is concerned around the country, at least for today, it doesn't look too bad. The Northeast is still getting it. Way up in the Northeast, they're getting it from anywhere from rain to snow up there. Yeah, on April 5th, snow up in the northeastern corridor of the United States. There is a lot of clouds and everything looming off of the California coast right now in central California and in the Sierras. There's more snow up there in the northern part of California. Everything else seems to be clear, both in the Gulf and up and down the East Coast and for the most part in the Midwest and the Plain States as well. So we will keep an eye on that. That's for sure. Uh, taking a look at some of the... Um, some of the situations for the Kentucky Derby. Now, you know, the Kentucky Derby, we're always talking about that leaderboard. Always talking about the points on the leaderboard. Plenty of points out there. There's going to th be three races with 100 points for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard. Another three races this weekend for 100 points for the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. And that's just going to be uh, do about it, except for one race that's got 20 points. And that, of course, is the, uh, the race that happens, the Lexington out at uh, Keeneland on the 13th of April. But for all intents and purposes, after this weekend, we're going to get a good idea, a good, uh, uh, you know, uh, center and, and good focusing on the top horses for the breeders uh, for the Kentucky Derby as far as the Kentucky Derby points are concerned. But in the past, you didn't have to have too many points if you uh, stayed on the on the uh, road to the Kentucky Derby. Last year, it took 45 points to get within the realm of the 20 horses in the Kentucky Derby starting gate. Remember, last year I think we only had 18 horses at the end. Anyhow, this year, however. They are predicting that in order to get into the 20 horse field for the Kentucky Derby, if all the horses that are going, are going to get the 100 points this weekend and all the horses that have already amassed their points stay healthy and are on their way to the Kentucky Derby, this year they say it's going to take 50 points to pass that barrier. So we'll wait and see about that. It'll be an exciting weekend of racing, that's for sure. And uh, with the uh, well, we'll have about uh, five, four or five weeks uh, from this weekend. After this weekend, four weeks to go to the Kentucky Derby. Don't forget about our Kentucky Derby special show we're going to have on. Uh, that's uh, Thursday, the 2nd of May. On Thursday, we'll have a special Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks 
preview uh, show right here where you're watching us now on the South Point Studios network only on the network. We're not going to simulcast it over the radio or the podcast or anything. It's only going to be on the South Point Network's feed at YouTube on that Thursday at, uh, I believe it's uh, 4 p.m. We're going to do it at 4 o'clock now. We moved it up an hour. We're going to do it at 4 o'clock. It'll be an hour show uh, highlighting not only the uh, Kentucky Oaks uh, day of racing, because that'll be the very next day, but also the Kentucky Derby, and then, of course, the Kentucky Derby seminar the day after uh, the uh, Oaks Day on the uh, 3rd of uh, May, and then, of course, on the 4th of May, the Kentucky Derby with all the celebrating and the, and the big, uh, big party going on in the Grand View uh, Grand Ballroom upstairs here at the uh, South Point. A lot of great stuff happening. All right, we're going to go to our first break. We're going to do it real quick because I want to get Jonathan Hardoon involved here with some of the races today across the country. And, of course, reminding you that uh, John Lindo will not be with us this weekend. But fear not, folks. He has a Lindo report for both Santa Anita and Keeneland today here at the South Point. And we have his selections as well. And so with uh, John missing, we still have Rich Ang. Uh, looking at the basketball and the big NIT win last night. And, of course, uh, Jerry Jackowitz as well. And your racing menu. Don't go away. We'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas, a quick note here that uh, Mr. Todd Pletcher has gotten a stay of his 14-day suspension in New York, so we'll wait and see about that. There will be a stay on that 14-day suspension in case you're keeping track of all of the uh, law and order going on in racing these days. But uh, outside of that, everything, uh, and of course, uh, the big uh, decision in Kentucky on Monday, whether uh, Amir Zidane will be able to run the Arkansas Derby winner, Muth, in the Kentucky Derby under the training title of Bob Baffert. We'll wait and see about that on Monday. Don't forget, uh, Santa Anita wraps up on Sunday uh, for their winter uh, spring meet. They'll take a week off, and then they'll come back on uh, April 19th with the meet that used to be at Hollywood Park that is now at, uh, at uh, Santa Anita. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, no, wait a minute. You know, I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and give you a few of the results from yesterday because it was very interesting yesterday, okay? Uh, yesterday uh, at, uh, at Gulfstream Park, Jonathan Hardoon's selection uh, finished second. And boy, let me tell you, this horse had a lot of trouble in the race. I, normally, I just will just sit there and say they lost a race, etc. their pick lost. But this horse, folks, when you take a look at the replay, should have won the race. So enough said there. Just got a bad trip all the way around. So Jonathan Ardoon's horse finished second in a gallant effort at Gulfstream. I think we ought to put that on maybe a horses to watch list. Santa Anita yesterday. John Lendo gave us the first race winner uh, in uh, Paradise Lake. Got up in the final jump. Got his nose down on the wire for the photo finish win. Bet down from three to one. This horse paid three eighty as a big, big favorite in the uh, first race at San Anita, but it, but it got the pick five started. That's for sure. Second race, however, in this race, it's a one mile race. It starts in front of the grandstand, goes the full circumference of a mile to the finish line at, at the in the one mile oval on the main track at uh, San Anita. Well, when they open the starting gate, the ho- number two horse. Flatter with jewels, stumbled, and unseated Giovanni Franco. Now, Franco laid on the ground, just 
quietly laid on the ground, didn't move for, I'd say, about a, 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 the horses that ran a good quarter mile going into the backstretch by the time he got up. But he got up on his own power, got up, and he walked off of the track. And the horse, obviously, uh, was not injured because all she did was stumble out of the gate. So she uh, was captured, and no harm, no foul to the jockey or the horses. However, going down the backstretch, the race, uh, racing establishment, the uh, officials at the track made a decision to uh, tell the jockeys in the race down the backstretch to pull their horses up because they didn't want them coming around on the racetrack again for fear that they would come over the same path where uh, Giovanni Franco was uh, laying, laying dormant. But by the time, you know, they figured out that Franco got up and left, the horses were already pulling up. So they, uh, they erred on the, on the side of caution. I think it was the right thing to do. It may have been a little premature, but it was the right thing to do. And so they had to cancel the uh, second race yesterday. Second race was canceled, leaving a lot of uh, alls as far as the uh, pick five and pick threes, et cetera. And, of course, the money individually bet in the second race at San Anita was uh, refunded. So they had to re refund the race. The second race was called off because of uh, Franco stumbling out of the gate in that race. And uh, so uh, there was another incident at a racetrack uh, yesterday around the country that we're going to get to with uh, Jonathan Ardoon, another race that was also canceled, but for different reasons. So we're going to get the, into that in just a moment. want to congratulate the two big graded stakes winners yesterday at Santa Anita, Nadette. Nadette came, what a, what a tremendous ride by Hector Barrios. This horse, Nadette, was trailing the field when they hit the top of the stretch down on the rail. Barrios decided to stay on the rail, rolled up the rail, managed to maneuver out and get uh, outside of the horse that was on the lead, and in the final jump, nailed that horse to win. And that was, of course, Nadette winning. Uh, and uh, Nadette uh, wins the race and pays eight sixty for trainer Neil Drysdale and um, um, Roberto uh, Barrios, who uh, did a great job. I can tell you what a great ride that was there. The ride made the difference for the win there for Nadette. Barrios, congratulations. Finishing second, stay in scam, who looked like a winner until uh, Nadette came on the scene from off the rail, finished second, and ascendancy was third in that race. In the other great uh, stakes race, the American stakes, the winner there was Johannes. Johannes came off an 11-month layoff to win this race convincingly under Umberto Rispoli for Tim Yachtin, a great job of training by Tim Yachtin to get this horse wound up and ready to go in the grade three American. Johannes pays 460 as the favorite there, outrunning Moritzi and Sumter. Uh, so uh, it, was, it was kind of an interesting day yesterday at Santa Anita. As you know, Santa Anita... Uh, yesterday, uh, they were uh, conducting the, the, the entire card that was scheduled to go on Saturday when they canceled. So yesterday, the makeup day, uh, looked like a Saturday racing card with two big graded stakes races. And yesterday at Aqueduct, when the spring meet, the spring meet has started yesterday at Aqueduct. Well, I got to tell you, Jose Lascano and trainer Linda Rice had a day yesterday, had a year yesterday in one day at Aqueduct. They won the second race together with Solib that paid $3.70. They came back in the fourth race together and won scream with Screaming Uncle that paid $2.90. So they were both prohibitive favorites. They came back in the sixth race and won with Cinderella's Cause, another favorite that paid $4.60. Came back in the seventh race with Joey Freshwater and paid $9.90. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, jockey Jose Lascano and trainer Linda Rice capped off the day with winning the eighth and final race on the card. Five wins on the day for this jockey trainer combination. What a day they had yesterday at Aqueduct Racecourse. Five out of the eight races went to Linda Rice and Jose Lascano. Now let's get your menu started. Here's the menu of racetracks available today in the race book, simulcast centers and racetracks around the country. I want to remind you, as we always do, the first post times we broadcast on the show each and every day reflect out of the Pacific time zone. So if you're listening here in Las Vegas or in the Pacific time zones, these, these will be the first post times that roll out in the books. If you're not 
and you're listening anywhere else on many different platforms, we deliver this to you, adjust from the Pacific time zone to wherever you're at so you don't miss anything. Okay? Let's get started. We begin uh, the racing menu with Tampa Bay Downs today. Nine races. First post time at Tampa Bay is 920. And uh, Tampa Bay has a super high five carryover today. Not a jackpot, but a regular super high five carryover. $3,283. First post time, 920 at Tampa Bay for their racing card. Then we go to Laurel Park. Laurel Park in Maryland. Now, uh, Laurel Park has nine races, and their first post time is 925. Caneland Racecourse. As they say in the business, racing the way it was meant to be, you better believe it. Keeneland Racecourse, set in the beautiful scenery of Lexington, Kentucky, at this time of the year in the springtime. Opening day for their spring meet today. Ten races. First post time is 10 a.m. Three stakes races on the card. They'll roll out like this. The Lafayette Stakes will be the sixth race on the card. The $400,000 Lafayette at seven furlongs for three-year-olds. A field of eight before any scratches. Nine to five favorite there is Booth with Joel Rosario aboard. Then we move to the eighth race, the $400,000 grade three Transylvania stakes. At a mile and 16th on the turf for three year olds, a full field of 14 before it scratches. This is a wide open event, too. The morning line favorite here is four to one, and that is First World War with Tyler Gaffleone. And then the big race of the day is the $600,000 grade one Ashland for three year old Phillies at a mile and 16th. 100 Kentucky Oaks points up for grabs in this one. Eight go to the post. You have last year's Eclipse Award-winning two-year-old filly and Breeders' Cup filly winner, just FYI, making her three-year-old debut. She's 3-1 to one with Junior Alvarado. You've got the very impressive Impel, which is uh, at 2-1 to one and actually the favorite in the morning line there with Florent Garot. And you also have the very impressive Candid who is candied, I should say. Candied breaks from the rail at 6-1 to one with Luis Saez. This is a hell of a Ashland field, that's for sure. It's the ninth race on the card. Ten races overall at Keeneland. Pick fives, you have a pick five in the first race and pick five in the sixth race. Pick fours, second race and seventh race. And the pick six will start in the fifth. First post time at Keeneland, 10 a.m. Pacific time on this opening day. Gulfstream Park has eight races. Gulfstream Park has a pick six rainbow jackpot carryover. 15500 make that $15,632. First post time at Gulfstream for their eight races, 10-10. Aqueduct, the big A in New York. Uh, their first post time for eight races at uh, Aqueduct is set at 10-20. 10-20, track is fast. Going to be mostly cloudy, 42 degrees, but the track is fast at Aqueduct. First post time, 10-20 for their eight race card. Then we go to Oak Lawn Park. Oak Lawn Park in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. And Oak Lawn Park has a first post time for 10 races of 10.30. And, uh, boy, you talk about Father and Son Day today at Oak Lawn. Check this out, folks. 10 races today at Oak Lawn Park. Trainer Steve Asmussen will be riding his son, Keith Asmussen, in seven of those races. They team up the Asmussens for seven of the 10 races today at Oak Lawn. Let's wait, let's wait and see where uh, the son and dad do today in their combination. First post time for 10 races set at 10.30 at Oak Lawn Park. Sunland Park has nine quarter horse races. Their first post time is 11.25. Small super high five carry over there, 2,335 bucks. Sunland Park first post time, 11.25 for the quarters. Then we get to Santa Anita. Santa Anita's great race place has nine races today. A good competitive card too at Santa Anita. Their first post time is one o'clock. Want to remind everybody that tomorrow at Santa Anita, they got 12 races, and their first post time will be high noon tomorrow. Today, it's at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And then you have Golden Gate. They've got seven races at Golden Gate. Uh, they've got a pick six jackpot carryover, 45386 bucks. Wow. Seven races. First post time at Golden Gate is 215 Evangeline Downs has nine races. Full fields there for the most part. Their first post time is 330 and then uh, Charlestown races will start at 4 p.m. with their eight race card and their pick six jackpot carryover, $7,656. Your menu for racing today. Now we go to, uh, want to remind everybody too, though, before we get to uh, Jonathan Ardoon, that we want to congratulate uh, tra- uh, d- announcer John Embrial. 
He's, he was cutting back on his announcing in the last couple of years, but he has decided to retire John Embriel 44 years with the New York Racing Association. Nobody has a bad word to say about this guy. He is class personified. He was always a guy that was there ready to do the job for everybody. And Mr. Embriol retires from New York racing. And uh, we congratulate him for that. A class act all the way. And a talented man, too. John Embriol retires. All right, now let's get to uh, Jonathan Hardoon. Good morning, Jonathan. Ralph, we just had an earthquake in New York. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> you're kidding. I'm not kidding. Your, your <laughs> house moved? Your, your house moved? And I slept in Saratoga. My table was shaken, so. <laughs> yeah, oh, my goodness. Uh, earthquake, earthquake in Saratoga? What about Aqueduct? Did you hear anything about down down in the city? So my son just texted me, Dad, did you feel that? I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh -huh. Two minutes later, he felt it. <laughs> uh, all right. Did they have any idea how what magnitude it was? Do you have any well, idea? It I mean, it came and went, but we've right. never had that in New York. All right. So our, us folks on the West Coast, especially in California, we call that a tremor. That means nothing. That's just a tremor. That's right. all. But in New York, wow. Congrats. Well. Wow. There's breaking news on the race day show. Uh, I thought you just meant you you had uh, it was some kind of massive news that you heard. Maybe you know you were really disappointed yeah, was, that that Embryol retired. I don't know. No, I liked him. He's a great guy, yeah. and uh, he's back up many years for for the best or one of the best in Tom Durkin. And uh, you're right, Ralph. A total class act. Nobody has a bad word to say. No, about I him. never met him personally, but I know of him, and I talked with him on occasion through the 44 years that he's been there. And I can tell you, he was uh, just, a, just a gentleman all the way. I'm uh, sorry I didn't have a chance to meet him when I was uh, doing my little tour back east, so to speak. In any case, I thought you were going to talk about the Richter scale uh, performances that L Lascano and uh, Linda Rice had yesterday there in New York. Wow. You saw something yesterday that you've never seen. On Sunday, David Jacobson won five races. The next day of racing, Linda Rice comes back and wins five races. <laughs> you will never see that again. I'm shocked. I mean, and you've never seen it before. Could you imagine trainers back-to-back -back days winning five out of the eight races? It's not like they had 14 races. Yeah. They had eight races, yeah. and each trainer won five races on a day. That's uh, quite a feat. That's absolutely amazing. You know, that almost rivals the record that I think will never be broken, and 90% of everybody in racing don't think it was be, would be broken. The, uh, the streak that Woody Stevens, the trainer, had in winning the Belmont Stakes. He won at least, five. what, four, five Belmont Stakes in a row. Five straights, yeah, five times in a row. That will never be broken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the fives are the key, man. Five of everything there, huh? <laughs> I guess so. We've got to find a number five to bet today. <laughs> yeah, full house of fives. We need one more five today. How about Jonathan Hardoon hitting five horses in a row on your sheet? How about that? That happens. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> In any case, uh, Jonathan, let's uh, take a quick look at the Ashland Stakes today because it is uh, one one hell of a, an assemblage of three-year-old fillies, I think. It is. It's a field of eight, and you can make a strong case for three of them, Candid, Just FYI, and Impel, you know. Candid and Just FYI were last seen in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, race, you know, for Phillies. So, so they're both making their first start as three-year-olds, like you said. In the race, believe it or not, Candid was favored over Just FYI that day. She was two to one, and uh, Candid and Just FYI was seven to one. Candid had a miserable trip, Ralph. If you get a chance, go back, watch the replay. I think she was the best that day. I liked her, I remember. Uh -huh. um, but now she's making her first start of the year. She has the advantage of breaking from the rail at a mile and a sixteenth. And I can tell you that the connections, uh, the Brad Cox barn, very high on Impel. This is a filly with a bright, bright future. So, but Candid's a value. She's at least six to one. The other two horses will be much shorter. Now, Keeneland, if I am, please correct me if I'm wrong, but Keeneland is not a, a, a one mile circumference racetrack. It's a mile and 16th, is it not? I think so. So I they're going right. to start and finish right there at the finish line because yeah. when they run mile races, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a different situation. But the Ashland is a mile and 16th on the main track. And you're right. I think it's going to come down to those three. But, you know, you've got Jody's Pride in there who's done enough with a resume to be in the conversation. And certainly when you have Flavian Pratt riding, it's always dangerous to leave him out. 
Yeah, and trainer Phil Bauer, who does a terrific job, trains the four horse, Helena's forte. She has four starts, two wins in two seconds, so she's no slouch. You know, it's a tough race. It's a good race, and it's a great, you know, race to to, to really see some terrific horses. You know, I want I do want to ask you one thing though. Unless you're having another earthquake and your alarm went off. <laughs> well, everything's some, okay. Some <laughs> All right. I just, I want to make sure that we don't get the roof falling in on you. But in any case, uh, there, there was one horse in this race that uh, one of the handicappers, uh, you know, that I respect likes and actually likes and put this horse on top in their selections. I'm not going to tell you who, because uh, he sells a service and uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to, you know, get in the way of Whatever, that, for okay, sure. Yeah. But this horse is 30 to 1 on the morning line, standout sensation. Do you see anything in the form that would give you a, a, a thought about putting this horse? Obviously, now it should at least be put in the gimmicks, like, a, you know, tries and supers, but what about that horse? Well, she's drawn inside, and I have a rule. I never knock any horse that somebody likes that's over 10 to 1. So the horse is listed at 30 to 1. Do I think she has a chance? No. I think she, off the figures, she's slow. Uh -huh. But listen, somebody found something that they like about the horse, so why not? Okay, we got that. So in your opinion, you think uh, Candide is going to outrun Impel and just FYI? I think she's the right horse to bet if you get anywhere near six to one. Okay, Correct. now we're going to get into the betting story. Now, you know what happened uh, yesterday at Santa Anita in the second race. I, uh, I'm not going to criticize them one bit because they erred on the side of caution. Jock went down, and when they made the call, he was still laying on the ground. He did get up after he got his senses together, et cetera. But remember, there was a horse race running at the time. And they were going right. to, they were going to, you can't talk for asking people how you feel and could yeah. you move. Or this. So you're right about that. They may have pulled the trigger a little early, but it's better That's to be just... safe than sorry, especially when you're dealing with people and lives and everything else. So. Yeah, certainly. And, and that was, he was laying in the area where the path was going to be at the finish there was line. No when, way around him. Yeah. There when, was when, no when, way around him. Yeah. So that was good. However, there was an instance yesterday at Mahoning Valley that you made me aware of earlier today when we were conversing. So why don't you tell people about that? Well, the seventh race yesterday at Mahoney Valley, they ran the race. And as usual, not as usual, but as, you know, what's becoming more and more uh, happening more and more often is there was a tote delay. So they waited about 10 to 15 minutes and they decided they couldn't fix the tote delay. So what instead of waiting, they just declared it a non-contest and refunded everybody their money. Well, that's fine if you lost the race, but, but what if you won the race? And what if you hit the exacta or the try or anything else involved and you want to go to the window and collect your money and they're telling you, sorry, no contest? Well, this, Are you kidding me? This, this instant, I will uh, explain further as uh, the way you explained it to me, because this instant is a little bit different than that uh, delay and cancellation at Tampa Bay. The money was already in the system. Up until they post time, the race. up until, they ran the race. right, exactly. Up until post time, the odds were on the board up right through the race. They ran the race. So, you know, people that are the consumers out there and watching the race had no idea they were having snafus with the tote board because it didn't, they didn't announce or anything. And so the race ran, the horse won, whatever the odds were on the board, the guy's waiting to make it official so I can go cash my ticket. Then they tell you that they've had a problem with the tote. And instead of waiting to try to compute and finish the tote and get those odds right for the people, they just canceled the race and gave everybody their money back. The horses ran in the race. Uh, the winner, you know, the owners and trainers and jockeys all got their money. And the betting public saw a race that they believed the odds were correct on and, and saw a race that they thought they had action in. And then they decide, decide to cancel it after the race was over and made official for everybody else except the gamblers. That don't, players got screwed. That players don't, got, they got screwed. Yeah, <laughs> that, that don't compute. Is that correct? Is that, is it, is That's it, exactly what happened. Correct. Right. I mean, Twitter blew up yesterday all over. They were going crazy, and rightfully so. How do you run a race and then just declare it's a no, no contest? Could I do that on all races I lose? No contest yeah. refunds. Okay, yeah, we have a new we have a new thing. The the gamblers in uh, the race players are going to uh, establish a new law that says uh, when we declare it a no contest on our part, we get our money back, huh? <laughs> exactly. 
Something's wrong, Ralph. They have to fix this. I mean, what race know. was this? The seventh race at Mahoney yesterday. Was Mahoney it the last Bell. race? No, there was an eighth race after Did that. Did they run the eighth race with paramutual wagering? Yes. yes. And they paid off on that race? Yes. Oh. And if you had to pick five or pick six or whatever the heck it was, they will, it became an all race. Uh, it's just silly. I don't even want to go into it anymore. I'm, I'm choking up over okay. that. I can't believe it. <clears throat> Give me some horses. All right, let's go to Aqueduct. Look at race number five, a mile on the main track. I like the number three horse in here, Young Frau. Uh, this is a four-year-old gelding, makes his first start for trainer Rob Atris. The Atris barn is heating up. Maybe he'll win five today, but he can't. He doesn't have five entered. But I like the number three horse in here, Young Frau. George Vargas comes in to ride seven or two on the morning line. Number three, Young Frau, just better than these. All right, the fifth race at uh, Aqueduct. It's the uh, final in the early pick five and early pick four. Number three, Young Frau. The three horse in the uh, fifth race is Jonathan's pick there. And where are we going next, Jonathan? Let's go to Santa Anita, eighth and final, a mile on the main track. No, they actually have nine races. I'm sorry. But I like the eighth race, number eight, Speed Grazy, a five-year-old gelding from the Mark Latbarn. Ride a switch today to Juan Hernandez, 4-1 to one on the morning line. Enough early speed to set things up for this guy. I like number eight, Speed Grazy, to win today's eighth race out at Santa Anita. Excuse me, Santa Anita, eighth race. You like the eight, Speed Grazy, the eight in the eighth race. Easy to remember there, eight in the eighth race. And uh, we are going to give you credit for Candied today at uh, Keeneland. How about that? I like it, Good. especially if she wins. <laughs> yes, I know. So anyhow, you have full sheets uh, today for Santa Anita, Keeneland, and Aqueduct, and also Oakland Park, right? Correct. And uh, tomorrow we'll be going over those races, and they are terrific races, Ralph. Uh, you know, you got to figure out, here's the whole key. Right. Horses that have already made enough points, are they going to really be squeezed for these races? You know, you got to go inside the trainer's mind a little bit. And obviously, they don't want to empty the tank with five weeks to go to the Derby. So if you have enough points, you know, I'm not saying you're not going to try. Obviously, you're going to try, but they may not be squeezed and you may be able to find a diamond in the rough. And of course, those three races, the Wood Memorial and the Bluegrass Stakes and uh, the Santa Anita Derby. And you are correct in assuming that maybe this time we have to look at the points, how they stand on the leaderboard and how they would stand if three other horses won at 100 points, and as long as they're safe on the leaderboard, uh, yeah, they may not uh, be on their belly riding, but they, they might try to win, but they're not going to give it all out there. And, uh, you know, that's when you really handicap uh, the trainers, too. Yeah, you got to handicap humans besides, the, the, the you know, the PPs and everything else that goes with it. Well, you'll do fine. You know, the gambling uh-huh. gods gave you a little shake-up this morning there in Saratoga, and you'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Ralph. Stay safe and be well. <laughs> All right, we're going to get right back. Uh, It's still nice and calm here in uh, the studio in Las Vegas, but uh, there's shake, rattle, and rolling, I guess, in uh, New York. A little tremor. Not that bad. Hopefully. We'll be right back with Rich Eng. Don't go away. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. 
Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Okay, back on Race Day Las Vegas, and now we're going to go out to uh, Rich Ang standing by. Uh, Richie, uh, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ralphie. Well, Big East got it done in the NIT. Yeah, that was a really exciting game. If anybody watched that NIT final between uh, Indiana State and uh, Seton Hall, Seton Hall opened up a big lead in the first half, and then uh, Indiana State closed the first half with an 11-0 run. And Indiana State actually took the lead late in the game, uh, 77 to 70, with about two minutes left. And Seton Hall closed the game with a 9 0 run. Really uh, an, an outstanding, really exciting game. And uh, we cashed, but that's, that's the most important, important part for us. No question about that. Now we move into the NCAA Final Four that will happen tomorrow. Uh, the first game is 3.09 Pacific time here in Las Vegas on TBS featuring North Carolina State, the Cinderella story of the uh, tournament, and uh, Purdue. And then the second game with 6.20 p.m. Pacific time on TBS will be Alabama against the number one seed, overall seed in the tournament, and rightfully so, Connecticut. Now we've got a double-digit uh, point spread right now with Connecticut and Alabama and close to a double digit between Purdue and North Carolina State, but it is the Final Four. Yeah, everything's on the line, and, uh, you know, there's no holding back. And, uh, you know, Connecticut is the number one seed for the entire tournament, so you got to keep that in mind. And they're the defending champion, and uh, they're rolling by double digits in every single game this year and last year in the tournament. So, uh, man, that's an immovable force to try to overcome. Now, North Carolina State is obviously, as we said, the Cinderella story of this uh, tournament. Had to win, I think, what is it, five games in their, uh, their local uh, conference tournaments to get into the uh, field here and then roll right through until uh, tomorrow's game. Is that correct? Yeah, in the ACC tournament, Ralph, uh, they had to win five games in five days, which is almost unheard of. Uh, it, it shows you the quality of the, the starters and the, the depth of the bench. And then uh, and the, that's the only way they were going to make the tournament. If they if they didn't win the ACC tournament, they would not have made the NCAA tournament. Uh -huh. And then uh, they've, they've been rolling right through a really an incredible story. And so now if you think they're going to win two more games Saturday and then the entire ball of wax on Monday. Uh, well, it started out at 200 to one. Now they're 20 to one if you think <laughs> that's going to happen. So we'll wait and see about that. That's for sure. Now, uh, I want you to break down those games for us and uh, your thoughts about both of them. And since we have tomorrow the big races in horse racing, and that's uh, the, the premise of our show, uh, we might want to take just a, a quick uh, minute or two right now to take a, 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 what you really think about these matchups. Well, uh, the first matchup we'll look at is uh, <clears throat> North Carolina State and Purdue. Uh, I think the, the biggest angle that handicappers are going to take a look at is they're both uh, the offenses are what we call center centric in the fact that the offense goes through uh, Zach Eady for Purdue and it goes through e, uh, DJ Burns for North Carolina State. It's it's old fashioned basketball. In, in other words, they feed the ball into the pivot and uh, rotate the offense around that. Now the the biggest issue uh, for teams that play Purdue is that Eady. Uh, fouls gets the uh, opposing centers in foul trouble in every game in this tournament and sometimes the backup also gets in foul trouble because there's 10 fouls among the the two uh, center positions so the key for north carolina state they've got to keep dj burns from you know picking up two fouls in the first four minutes or something like that because then they got to take him out of the game and if they take him out of the game produce probably going to roll but if uh, Burns can play 25, 30 minutes and be effective, uh, I think they can give him a, a fighter's chance. As far as the other game, uh, UConn and uh, Alabama, uh, UConn, the only games they've lost this year, uh, one of them was to Creighton, 
which we talked about a, a, a month or two ago. Creighton shot lights out from three points, 14 out of 28. I think that's the uh, blueprint for Alabama to try to beat UConn is they've got to get hot from the outside. And in last night's NIT game, Ralph, Seton Hall was one of the three teams that beat Connecticut. And if you watch the game, you can see why. They just really a uh, very uh, methodical offense, try to take high percentage shots, play great defense. Uh, I don't know if Alabama is capable of playing the way Seton Hall is, but I think they have the capability to play like uh, Creighton because they take a lot of three-point shots. What I want to do, uh, Richie, with you is uh, we're going to hold off tomorrow for your sele- your actual selection, your bet on those games, and, of course, ask you to take a look at the three big stakes races tomorrow, the Wood, the Sanita Derby, and the uh, Bluegrass. We'll hold on off on that uh, for tomorrow, your selections there. But I, I did want you to go through a little bit of your breakdown of those two games and how you see them. I know that, you know, these two, uh, Purdue and Connecticut, are really, really good teams. But this is the final four. These other two teams have got here somehow, some way by winning uh, their brackets, et cetera. And so when you're talking about somewhere between double digit and close to double digit uh, favorites, um, well, I don't know. Sometimes maybe you say, hey, they got here. Why not take the points uh, and see if they can keep the games close until the end? We'll wait for your prediction, of course, until tomorrow. Today, you got two sheets available you got Keeneland. And you got Santa Anita, and you had already stated to us uh, before uh, today that you're going to do a Keeneland handicapping sheet separate of a Santa Anita sheet throughout the Keeneland meeting. So you're going to have two sheets, Santa Anita and uh, Keeneland, uh, on the days, of course, that Santa Anita will be running throughout this, uh, this period. And so uh, let's get started with some picks there. Yeah, I've got three picks. I'm actually going to pick the uh, the women's one of the women's games tonight, Ralph. Uh, okay, real quick. Uh, South Carolina is kind of like the UConn uh, of the men, and the fact they're the number one seed. South Carolina is 36 and 0, and uh, they're on a mission because last year they were 36 and 0, and they got upset by uh, Caitlin Clark in Iowa in the semifinals. So I like South Carolina, even though it's laying a lot of lumber. They're minus 11 over the North Carolina State women. But uh, let's go with the, the Gamecocks, 36-0 and 0 to go 37-0. and 0. And as far as uh, a couple of horse plays, uh, let's go to Keeneland. And uh, I'm going to jump on the, the Jonathan Hardoon bandwagon in the Ashland race nine. I really like Candy from the rail making the, the return under Todd Pletcher. And uh, I agree with him. If you can get anything close to 6-1, to one, this is a must play. This horse will should get a beautiful trip from the rail under Luis Saez. So we'll go with the one candied in race nine at Keeneland. And then my third pick for today uh, will be at Santa Anita in race number four. Let's go with the three horse, Feel the Magic. Uh, this horse uh, with J.J. Hernandez. I think Hernandez can win three, four, five races today on the card. This horse should get a, a gorgeous uh, stalking trip uh, under Hernandez. So let's go with... Uh, Feel the magic. It's actually the number three horse, not the number four. It's number three horse in race four. All righty. And uh, at uh, Santa Anita, again, in the uh, fourth race, you like the three, Feel the Magic. And, of course, at Keeneland, you like in the feature race, Candied, uh, the one horse there. Uh, in the Ashland, of course, uh, every, there's, I doubt if she's going to be that uh, five to one because uh, <laughs> a, a lot of people, a lot of handicappers, respected handicappers really like her. We'll wait and see. That's going to be an exciting race today. Remember, mm-hmm. Richie's got San Anita and Keeneland going on the RacedayLasVegas.com websites. And, of course, we'll get his selection in the Final Four tomorrow when they'll play that Final Four. In the meantime, thanks a lot, Rich, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to blow off the last commercial because i got to give you John Lindo's picks. Now, remember, the Lindo Report uh, is available for today at Keeneland and for today at San Anita. Full Lindo Reports, both of them are available today, right now, for today's racing at the uh, racetracks there in the race book here at the South Point free of charge. It is exclusively distributed only here at the South Point free of charge, complimentary here from the South Point because they love horse players here. And I will now give you John, uh, John Lindo's uh, two picks. He has one at San Anita and one at Keeneland. So uh, let's go to Keeneland. At Keeneland in the fifth race today, John Lindo likes the five Psy B. Number five Psy B in the fifth race at Keeneland. And that, of course, wraps up the early pick five, early pick four at Keeneland in the fifth race, the five. Easy to remember. Eight to one on the morning line with IRAD aboard. 
the five in the fifth race at Keeneland. And at Santa Anita, John Lindo uh, comes in the same race that Jonathan Ardoon came in. So now we got a Sirocco play going. In the eighth race at Santa Anita, John Lindo likes number four, don't fight the Fed. Number four, don't fight the Fed. This horse is 12 to one on the morning line. In the eighth race, he likes the four, don't fight the Fed. So the Sirocco play in the eighth at Santa Anita, obviously, is Jonathan and John's picks. And that is a five, uh, four, eight, eight, four exact a combination. That's the Sirocco play, but John likes the four. And again, the Lendo Report, complete Lendo Reports right now for Keeneland and San Anita and a South Point uh, race book free of charge. All right, now let's go to Jerry Jackwood standing by. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Well, we got a lot great to... Great race card at Santa Anita today for, for change. You want to know something? It was a great card yesterday, a great card today, and I'm, I'm expecting it's going to be a great card, obviously, tomorrow with all those big races. So, yeah. uh, you know, I guess uh, in waiting and the cancellations, et cetera, uh, loaded up the entry box in those races as well. Do you have a thought about it, Ashland, before we get your two picks? Mm, not really. Okay, then we'll go right to Aqueduct yesterday, or should I, maybe we ought to name it Linda Rice Park. <laughs> yeah, really. She had some day yesterday. Yeah. Well, she she's a great trainer, and she gets them going. I mean, they run, they run like they're young and feeling good. So, what are we doing? She's a great trainer. All right, let's go to Aqueduct today, Ralph. Let's go to the um, to the eighth race for our play. Okay, that's the uh, final number race. Number four, Bor yeah, number four, Borletti at three to one. Seems like pretty fair value. I might go down to like two to one, but. Three to one seems about right uh, for Dick Dutro. You know, you kind of got to like this horse. Second time Dutro, first time ran really well uh, off the claim. Maybe he's got a, a, a particular handle on the horse. I'll give him a little shot. I'll take the four over the three, six, seven, eight. Reverse is just a break even. You need to get the win out of this. It's probably going to be two to one. So. All right. So in the eighth and final race today at Aqueduct, do you like <laughs> number four? For uh, Borletti, number four, Borletti, the four horse. And the link ups will be numbers three, six, seven, and eight. Three, six, seven, and eight, and uh, and the four. And of course, always reverse that because uh, you know what uh, Jerry says. Got to reverse those things, that's for sure. And um, yeah, but Ralph, remember, sometimes you're reversing to make a lot of money. Sometimes you're reversing just to break even. So it depends. If you're at two to one, your reverses have to be very tight. Okay, you got it, my man. In the eighth race, the four over. Three, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now Sanita. Yeah, and I just want to say, you know, I'm always talking on the show about what a good idea it is to combine ideas to have two different people's opinions. Uh -huh. Here's an example of Don't Fight the Fed, which John's pick is a V horse on the power page. Maybe yeah, that could help some. It certainly is. I doubt uh, it'll be ambitious to get 12 to 1 on this horse, but you're right. It is a V horse on your sheet, uh, but uh, duly mentioned there. And uh, we'll wait and see uh, where your pick lies. Let's go to the fifth race, Ralph. I've got Johnny Drama for uh, Georgie Papa, Papa. You know, every time I say this <laughs> privately, I say his name correctly. Pa Papa Padromo. Names. How about that? Papa, Papa Padromo. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, his horse, it looks like starting a winning streak. Uh, won really easily last time out. I thought um, I thought it was, it was no big deal, and I think he's just going to progress through this form cycle. I like the one an awful lot. At six to one, I think you're getting the best of it. I'm playing the one in race number five, win it, win or win in place. Play the one over the two, seven, eight, and nine. Reverse two, seven, eight, and nine back over the one. The one, it's all about Johnny Drama. All Jim right, well, let, let's hope there's no drama to the race and he wins convincingly in the fifth race, the one Johnny Drama. And the link ups are two, seven, eight, and nine. And reverse, the one is the key in the fifth race. And then, of course, the anchor in the early pick four and early pick five at Santa Anita. And uh, all I can tell you, Jerry, is you're really risking it when you're getting a pronunciation correction from me, <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> who does more than my share of messing up names, that's for sure. But it is uh, Papa Dromo, that's for sure. All right. Uh, we got a big day uh, tomorrow, certainly. And we'll ask uh, Jerry to take a look at the wood. Obviously, he will be at the San Anita Derby, obviously, as he will be. And uh, take a look at the bluegrass as well, Jerry. Of course. All right. We'll have those. We'll uh, be done tomorrow. All right. You got it, my man. And of course, Jerry J's power page for all of San Anita and all Aqueduct right now available at jerryjspowerpage.com. All right. Wrapping up this uh, Friday show. Hopefully the ground stays nice and firm here in Las Vegas and other places. We understand, the, uh, Ann just told me that the 
the uh, little earthquake in New York w w was centered out of New Jersey and was a 4.7 measure on the Richter scale. All right, one more thing to say, and you're going to say it, Jerry. Have a great race day, everybody.